What's up everybody, it's Spirit with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. And we're starting things off today with the Krios, I hope I'm saying that right, Battle Mech. Now this was actually something that got posted to the workshop of a week or two ago, I think. But um, I actually had other builds I wanted to use, but I had considered this one for the last episode because it looks really, really cool. You all know how much I'm a sucker for mechs. Um, and it actually, from the video in the description and stuff of the build, actually looks pretty stable for a mech. I mean, normally the mechs are real wobbly and all that kind of stuff, but it seemed pretty, pretty legitly stable. So I wanted to check it out. Um, one cool feature too, for like if you're a, a soldier on the ground, is it has these containers. Um, I'm not sure if that's it or, oh, there it is. So there's a ejector button here. I don't know if you can reach it from the ground. Maybe you can from a different angle, but not from where I'm standing here. But basically, the cool part is it'll eject like tools and things for you. Or it's supposed to. There it goes. So there's like rifle, ammo, drill, welder. Uh, I think that's explosives. And like a grinder and all that kind of stuff. So it's like. You know, everything a good soldier needs to survive out in the wild with his mech. Um, now as for entry... I guess you just fly up and grab, and grab it. Um, so we have... Ooh, this looks really cool. We have a turret on top, obviously. Now I don't know if those buttons are for decoration or not. Um, I'll have to check that out. But we obviously have a, a missile launcher and a Gatling gun on each arm. And you can kind of read it there for kind of an emergency thing if you don't want to pull up your HUD. There's toggle walking, toggle turret AI, toggle jump pack, automatic gatlings, automatic missiles, antenna, autopilot, prepare self-destruct, and confirm self-destruct. So it has all of those features, obviously. Um, the back here is a jump pack. Now I'm not sure how that works exactly as far as uh, if you could just override it and use it as a thruster or something, or if it's pre-programmed to just do a burst or something of that effect. Um, I believe the turret AI, which is two, is going to be the, yeah, it's on off for the interior turret up on top. Um, there's the jetpack, Gatling guns. So those are on and off. The interesting part is it says automatic, so I don't know if that means automatic Gatling guns and automatic missiles. I don't know if that means there's a way to manually fire them or not, or if you just have to turn them on and off. Um, I guess that's maybe run by a script. And then the antenna. Autopilot is a cool feature, too, that it'll walk without a pilot in it, as far as I know. So let's start out with the basics. Let's just get it walking. So one... But like, you, like, as I said, it's actually really stable for a mech. Normally the mechs are super wobbly and stuff. Though I do feel like I'm tipping forward a bit, though that could be... That could be my fault. Let's try that again, from this view. Okay, that seems a bit more... stable. Ooh. So I do seem to kind of be tilting forward. That could be terrain too, because I have it on like just a vanilla planet. And I don't know that this is actually the flattest of terrains. So I could be doing that wrong too. Uh, let's see, what's next? The jump pack, which is three. So let's try that one. Okay, so, oh, 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 that's, that's my bad. I tipped it forward. Alright, here we go. Um, I'm kind of getting a little higher than I wanted to go. Can we just turn it off? Can I stop this way? Nope, can't do it that way. Okay, so full disclosure, the video on the description that's kind of like a rundown walkthrough kind of thing uh, did it way better than I just did, so clearly user error on that part. 
Um, but that's kind of how the jump pack works. It's just not how it's, you know, supposed to work properly, you know, with a good pilot. <laughs> you know, so let's see what else we got. Now, one thing I wasn't sure about is I thought I saw the arms disengage, but it doesn't seem to disengage when you turn the weapons on and off. So I don't know if that's another or a different manual control or not. Um, seven is the autopilot. The antenna, nah, I mean, that's not really that useful for us. And then we'll check out the auto destruct. So autopilot, maybe I have to turn it on for walking. I'm not really sure. Because that's not, it's not enabling it. It's, it's just saying off when I toggle it. So maybe if I start walking. Ooh, there we go. If I get out. I think it's actually better. I think it's actually walking better than when I was in the thing. Like, I think it's doing better on its own. Though I don't know, like I said, I don't know what the autopilot is doing because it keeps saying off no matter if I click the button. So, I'm not sure if it's actually working or if it's just because I left the controls going. If it's just, you know, walking the right way. Okay, turn it, stop, stop it. But as you can see, I mean, I let it go on its own and it actually just kept on walking. And it didn't fall over or anything like I thought it was going to. So that's really, really cool. Now, for the self-destruct part, apparently there are two facets. The prepare and confirm. So we're going to try that real quick. Um, I guess that's just going to toggle it on. I don't think that engages a timer or anything. And it glows. Oh, and the jetpack kicks in and it flies off too. Oh, that's so cool! That is so cool! That's awesome! Alright, so obviously that's all for that one, because it's kind of hard to use it now. Uh, oh man, pieces went everywhere, too! So that's all for this one, let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so next up is the clan walker or clan or whatever. I'm not really sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. But as you can see, there's a lot of rotary contraptionism going on here. By the way, that's a that's a straight scientific term. Um, look it up. Rotary contraptionism. Um, so obviously, I think this is designed... I don't know. It doesn't say anything about this in the description, but I think this is more of like a almost a proof of concept type of thing because you can see it's not really outfitted with any kind of weapons or survival like refineries and stuff like a mobile base or anything um but i really like the idea because it was from the video that i saw of it it's actually a really stable uh walking mechanic and so i wanted to try it out to see if it was actually as stable as it looked um but believe it or not, if if I understand it correctly, there's only one uh, rotor on each side, I think, that's actually controlling everything, and the rest are, like, mostly set to be loose, I think. But let's get cracking real quick. So let's see here. Yeah, as you can see, well, this is one timer block, so I don't really know how many rotors it actually has. Um, but... You can go faster or you can go slower, and obviously at a certain point you're negated and so you're standing still. Uh, there was one little kind of warning in the description about if you sped it up too much, there was a possibility that the, they, come, they become out of sync and your walking pattern would get all screwed up. So we're not going to do too crazy. That's obviously really slow. So let's try one more. Seems good. Maybe do one more. I think that works good. So yeah, as you can see, it's actually pretty pretty stable for a, for a walker. I mean, it's not... There's always an element of wobble, or at least I call it wobble, in Space Engineers. Just because of the way the physics of the game work and stuff, they're not super duper refined. 
at the moment, or at least in my opinion. Um, I think, I don't even know if this actually has any gyroscopes on Yeah, see, now they're getting a little out of sync. So we can, what did I do, four? We'll wait for them to... Oh, maybe I did five. Yeah, there we go. So now they're stopped, but the problem is now they're all lined up. So I don't know if the if it'll work at this point. So I wouldn't go above five or four. I wouldn't go above four. I think I clicked it five times. And now it's not really walking because they're out of sync, and that's kind of what makes the walking motion is the synchronization. Okay, so I went ahead and reset it. Let's try it with three. Three seemed to work okay. But I think I had it on five. And when I and after it walked for a minute, then I saw what the description was saying where it will sync up, and then you're not really getting the left, right, left, right, or inner outer leg motion that actually makes it go somewhere. Um, but I don't know if there's I think there's a gyroscope because I feel like I'm turning. And it's turning okay. Actually, I'm wondering if it's the turning. Because when I just turned, that seemed to mess up the, the synchronization. So that might have been my fault for turning it while I was walking. Not 100% sure on that. But overall, I really like the idea of it. And like I said, it may have been more of a proof of concept than anything else. Which, if you follow the instructions and don't do what I do, which is, you know, mess with things and see how you can break them, uh, it worked really well. And I love all the rotors. I don't know how this... I don't know who sits down and figures out how to make all these rotors work. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one. So let's move on to the last one. Alrighty, so last but not least, we have the AS-1 Stormfire. Now, this is an interesting ship to me. It is a... Mostly atmospheric, I guess. Um, I, I think in theory, uh, the description said it's an atmospheric deployment, but I think in theory you might be able to take it out into space because of the hydrogen thrusters, but I don't know. That's a me opinion, not in the description. The description has it as an atmosphere ship. Um, but it's a cool little carrier thing. I did kind of paste it a little weird. It looks like it's crashing, but it's holding. It's floating. So, you know. Um, let me see if I can actually correct that real quick, because it looks kind of funny. Not to mention, it's walking weird. Oh. Reactor, airlock, airlock. Um, what about bridge? <laughs> Where's the bridge? Bridge. There we go. Follow the signs! Wait a minute. I wonder if that's a... Is that an orientation thing? That would be cool. Okay, this looks like the hangar. We could just go through here and look at it, actually, and then look at the outside after I get it realigned. But this is the main hangar area. There's a landing gear there, which I'm assuming is to hold as like a docking clamp kind of thing. Um, and then this goes where? Oh! There's a atmospheric entry point. That's cool. Let me go up this way. Where's the bridge, though? I'm wondering if this is a logo or if it's actually telling you where you're oriented at, which would be cool. I'm very confused. I mean, I was following the sign. The bridge is low, though. That's what's weird about this. The bridge is on the underbelly. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. It's almost like a blimp. All right, let's see if we can't kind of correct this a bit. Oh, that's neat. I actually did not have to pull up my HUD or anything. I can actually use the the HUD alignment script. How cool is that? <laughs> In case anyone had actually wondered how that really works. Um, kind of like that. This is really cool, though. I didn't know the bridge was on the bottom. That's kind of neat. Actually, we're a little bit high. Let's see if we can bring it down. There we go. Now we should be pretty even with the horizon. Okay, so that was cool. That was cool. Is there anything on this side? There's a left path here. I guess there's not anything on the on the right over there. It's just one hallway. 
All right, server, hangar, bridge obviously went this way. There was still some stuff back there to explore. But we can go ahead and go through here. So here's the server farm. Houses all the scriptery. Ah, and this goes back to the hangar. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I like this design overall. I mean, I, you all know I'm a, kind of a sucker for catwalks and things. But this is designed to be a combat ship, primarily. Like, um, all or I think the description referred to it as an all-around uh, combat ship. Got a couple cryo chambers. Let's see what else we have available. Ooh, an armory! Yes, please. And this is a vanilla build. Actually, all three of these builds today have been vanilla builds, I believe. If... Okay, so this is a little bit of recording magic. If I went with the walker thingy, the spider walker, for the second episode, I'm, I'm a little debating on that. Um, but I think I'm going to go with it. So if that stays the second, the second one, and you know what I'm talking about, then yes, all of them have been vanilla. If not, I'm not really sure because I won't know what I'll have used to replace it, and you won't know what walker I'm talking about, so there. <laughs> uh, more than likely, I'll probably keep that one, because all of the bloopers were kind of my fault. It was just, it was user error. Oh, we're back up on the main deck again. Oh, wait! We're out at the nose, though. Whoa. Oh, that was weird. That was some lot, lot stuff. I was like, what happened to the missiles? So yeah, that looks better. It doesn't look like it's crashing now. But yeah, I really expected the bridge to kind of do what most ships do and be like up in that area right there. I didn't even realize it was on the bottom. That's cool. It's almost like a blimp in that regard where you have all the main stuff on top and then the... Okay, so I think that is a logo. I was going to say, that's that was going to weird me out if that was some kind of compass thing. And there's a little fighter on the back, which is so cute. And it looks cool too. It's like a little, uh, I'm not really sure, it, re it resembles something, I just might, I'm not sure off the top of my head, like the name escapes me, but it resembles something. Um, maybe like, uh, maybe I'm thinking of like the Orcas from Command and Conquer, It's kind of what it looks like. Or, you know, you could go with a Quinjet from S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, that's another example of something like that, but it looks really cool, I like that. We've got all the turbine atmosphere stuff going on. Let's see, what else, what else? Let's go back in the way we came, just so we don't get super confused on where we are. Okay, we did not go look at the reactor. Okay, we went that way. Airlock to the left, airlock to the right. It goes this way. That's the large reactor, so it goes back here. Oh, a rear airlock to the, um, yeah, to the, the Quinjet, whatever. Um, but that in and of itself, the airlock system, shows that I think it's possible to take it into space. Now, the, the reason I say possible, and that's all me in the description didn't say so, is I don't know about the thrust. I don't know if the thrust is enough to get it out of the atmosphere, because that was a, you know, speculation on my part. I don't know if you can actually take it out of the atmosphere if it doesn't have enough force, but if you could clear the atmosphere, then you could more than likely take it in space, because you have the hydrogen thrusters that would kick in and, and carry you through space. Um... If you don't have enough thrust to get up there, then, you know, they're just designed to give you extra boost while you're in an atmosphere. But the, the reason I'm speculating that you can um, is mainly because there's airlocks everywhere, and why would something need to be pressurized if you can't take it into a place that doesn't have an atmosphere kind of, kind of deal. Uh, and this is all of our industrial area looking stuff, which is really cool. I like how this is laid out. I like these busy, detailed, cramped hallways kind of thing. I think it gives more of a lived-in feel because most spaceships are not, well, I say are not, but would not, unless you're like super fiction like Star Trek where, you know, you've been doing it for so long you can make them really advanced. But if they're kind of believable spaceships, you wouldn't expect them to be real roomy and comfortable. They're, they're more like efficient and, and do 
you know, maximize space, optim you know, optimize your space kind of thing. So whenever you see these like cramped utility hallways with pipes and conveyors and everything, it makes it feel a bit more like how I could perceive a real somewhat, somewhat near future ship design kind of thing because you're still trying to maximize your your space usage. So I like those kinds of hallways. Um, but yeah, overall I really like the design. The lower bridge kind of threw me for a loop for a second, but actually I really like that. I just wasn't expecting it, but once I got kind of adjusted to that, I really kind of like that actually. I think that's a cool uh, twist, if you will, on like the typical designs of things and stuff. Is It made it a little more intriguing but I kept seeing these signs that said bridge and I was like why does it keep going down I was like bridges are supposed to go up to the top and so it was really confusing me and I couldn't figure out what was going on oh and here's the med bay I was leaving all the doors open so when I had a, op a closed door I was like hmm, what is this all right so let's see is there any anything crazy about this here we've got weapons Hydrogen drives, torpedo doors, ooh, hangar, batteries, Gatling turrets, missile turrets, connectors, and I see nothing else, so let's see. First of all, so it definitely has some lift to it. Um, let's... Before I mess with the rockets, let's do the torpedo door things, just in case they're covering anything up. Like that. So basically, yeah, uh, quite a few episodes of blowing up ships in the Inspiration series has taught me if there's a torpedo door, probably should open all of those before you try messing with weapons. Because you never know what people deem torpedoes, and in this case it would be the rockets. So between the front nose with that kind of firepower and then all the turrets on it, yeah, it could definitely be a really good battle cruiser kind of thing. That 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 could do some damage. And, all right, so I think that's going to wrap things up for this episode. So, uh, yeah, we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.